fund to be used only to replace firefighter turnout gear, personal protective equipment. A majority vote is required to pass Article 17. It's recommended by the Board of Selectmen 5-0. It's recommended by the Budget Committee 8-0. The fiscal impact note from the Finance Department is a zero tax impact. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 17? So moved. moved by Ms. Woolsey, seconded by Mr. Bridal. Who would like to be heard first on Article 17? Sir? Yes, sir. Our Chief, Chief Ayotte. Thank you very much. I'm bringing my model with me today. This is Firefighter Adam Mills, if you don't mind. Okay. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. I am your Fire Chief, Jameson Ayotte. This is Adam Mills, who's uh, representing what we have for fire equipment. Today we're discussing the purchase of a second set of fire gear or turnout gear for firefighters. Our primary sets are being replaced as we continue on through. In 2009, there was a, a AFG grant that was received by the town of Hampton that allowed the purchase of 33 sets of gear. That was a total then of approximately $64,000. Now to replace 40 sets of firefighting gear, the total will be upwards of $165,000. Our gear protects us from all forms of heat and other um, insults and injuries. It's created the design to protect us from the environments that we're going into during firefighting. The second set of gear is essential because as a firefighter fights a fire in a smoky environment, they're exposed to significant amounts of chemicals. Uh, these chemicals stay and they permeate through the gear, so that gear must be laundered in an effort to do the best we can to re remove carcinogens from the gear and also prevent the exposure to our firefighters. It's essential to get them into, the, into our uh, extractor device to remove as much of the material as possible. When that happens, it takes several hours to wash, then dry the gear. This gear is fully functional throughout the time that they're, they're operating, and they need to be fully functional firefighters throughout that time, so they need a second set of gear to be able to put on while this first set's being laundered. I'm gonna show you and demonstrate real quick what we're looking to purchase. You see my helmet over here, made of leather. We also have plastic ones. This is designed to protect the head. We have a jacket, pants and boots, which are hanging down below. But if I can, I'm gonna steal this from Adam and I'm going to verify it. Right inside the label, it says that firefighting is an ultra hazardous and ultra dangerous job. Nobody that took this profession thinks otherwise. Since the days of the bucket brigades, it's always been ultra hazardous and ultra dangerous. Not my terms. However, what I can tell you is that as time's moved on and the fuels have changed, plastics that are burning right now, different um, chemicals that are being sprayed onto materials for fire retardants, they're exposing the firefighters to a greater deal of carcinogens. We're seeking to replace um, some of the gear that we have right now as primary sets, and this article as, uh, assists us in replacing and offering a second set to all firefighters. So we ask your support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Ayotte. Okay, wait, wait, Sir. don't go away. I'll be right where's behind that, you. Where's that label? Right inside. Okay, I want the, the audience to see that, and I want the viewers at home to see that. These outfits, this turnout gear, is done for each firefighter. Some are tall, some are short, some are a little heavier, some are thinner. This is tailored specifically to the individual who's going to be wearing it. So it's not like going in and buying a shirt off the rack. This is very important for the safety of our firefighters. We have about nine or 10 this year who need to have their gear restored, um, get brand new gear. Uh, and that doesn't count the secondary sets. We've been, we've been not very uh, prudent or timely in paying attention to the gear that these men and women wear when they go out to fight fires. We shouldn't have to be buying nine or 10 sets in one year because you had a whole bunch bought at one time and then all the rest kind of sat there. We've got a department, and right now there are nine, I believe, nine sets that need to be replaced. The men are still wearing the outfits from 2009. These people are going out and risking their lives in very, very unpleasant conditions, and they need to be protected. Now, we have women on the fire department now in this modern age. These individuals are all different. Every one of them is a different person, and that outfit has got to be tailored 
to the people who are going to be wearing it. This gear is critical. I want to see this fund established so that there is an orderly transition. And by the way, they need two sets of gear. And the secondary sets have really been ignored over the years. They need, if they come back from working fire and there's another fire that comes up, they need that second set of gear. This is expensive, but it's desperately necessary to protect these men and women. So I want to see an orderly progression now that we don't have to go fishing through the budget every year. Just add the money on a regular basis to this capital reserve fund so that we are protecting the men and women that we are sworn to protect as a community. I want to see these outfits properly set up for each man and woman in that department and there's no excuse for not protecting our firefighters. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wolsey. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Mr. Carpentier. I was hoping for the added support up here of Avon, but uh, uh, again, Jed Carpentier, uh, President of the Professional Firefighters of Hampton. Um, I want to first off start off by thanking the Board of Selectmen and the other elected officials that unanimously uh, supported this article. Uh, it shows that everyone recognizes the absolute necessity of this article for us to be able to do our jobs in the safest manner possible and provide the best service to the citizens of the town of Hampton. Uh, I might reiterate some of the things the Chief had already said, but uh, the goal of this article is to get every member who has potential to operate in an environment that could be immediately dangerous to life and health uh, a second set of turnout gear, which is the protective clothing that you saw Adam demonstrating up here. Uh, we are faced with a couple of challenges. First, as you heard, a large percentage of our personal protective equipment was purchased in 2009 through a federal grant. Uh, and that gear, as Ms. Wosley said, is custom to each member who, uh, who wears that gear. The industry standard for personal protective equipment for firefighters is that the gear is to be retired no more than 10 years from the date of manufacture, unless there is a specific reason to retire the gear earlier. Um, the industry standard from our manufacturer, Globe, um, they back up the um, industry standard recommending the 10 years for replacement. If anybody needs to reference that, that's NFPA 1851. It references it in chapter 10. Secondly, um, per best practice and per our own internal policy, Firefighters have to be decontaminated when they return from operating in those environments that are immediately dangerous to life and health. Now, the town has been, uh, we're, we're fortunate enough to have the equipment to clean our own gear internally, um, but that takes time to cycle a, ho a whole shift of firefighters um, through to get their gear cleaned, dry, and back in service. We can't operate, uh, we can't clean everyone's all at the same time so it's an orderly function to get back to there. Um, <clears throat> and upon, uh, upon return from a structure, oh, sorry, uh, thankfully, uh, sorry, got a little off track there, I was rolling. <laughs> um, long story short, that gear protects us and um, whether it, be dam whether it be contaminated from an, a, an environment by carcinogens or toxins or whether the gear be damaged and have to be pulled out of service because we were extricating a patient from a motor vehicle accident, um, this, this gear protects our members and allows them, again, to do their job as safely as possible and provide the highest level of service to the people of town. Um, it allows our members uh, to remain at a constant state of readiness and respond safely for the um, citizens of Hampton and the tourists that visit us throughout the busy season in the summer. This article is truly vital to your fire, department, fire department's ability to maintain that constant state of readiness. Um, thank you again to the Board of Selectmen and the other elected officials for their unanimous support, and I would love to see a unanimous vote from the public for this vital piece as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Carpentier. Mr. Warburton. Mr. Moderator, uh, I'm so proud to be supporting this article and how it all came about, and I want to 
uh, commend the, the fire chief and Jed Carpentier. You know, these discussions actually started in this room at the deliver session last February when I had a few conversations about, you know, the turnout gear and how important it is for safety reasons that we need to have our firefighters have the best. Throughout the remaining months, through Chairman Bridal and his board, through Chairman Jones, the Budget Committee, in collaboration with the Fire Department, and as Mrs. Woolsey showed today with the demonstrations uh, uh, and how important it is, what a great result we had. There wasn't, there was very little, um, as a matter of fact, there was no opposition to this, and even the discussion was no, not at any great length because we knew how important it was. The other thing you should note is that the Budget Committee was very much in favor of the other avenue of this, and that is taking it under the, um, out of the undesignated fund balance, because we felt for safety reasons, that's when you should use the undesignated fund balance. So I congratulate everybody involved with this. I highly endorse this. I, I think it's, it's such a great thing, and our, our men and women of the Hampton Fire Department need this, so I urge you all to support it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warburton. Mr. Bridal. Yes, Russ Bridal, 225 Toll Farm Road. Speaking as a 30-year firefighter in this town, you know, back when I first started, when you had a night hitch, you bought it yourself. And you wore that thing until the thing was worn out because they were expensive. The department now does that. Back when I was a firefighter, you had your night hitch out, you had a choice of either night hitch or three-quarter boots. The night hitch, you took up, you put it next to your bed, or at your home, or you're at the station, and when you went out, you jumped in it. Did we ever wash them? Nah, it, was, it looked better if they were salty and they were all dirty. You know, um, we have kids come into our fire stations all the time for classes. What do they want to do? They want to put their fire gear on. <laughs> Finally, the fire service has come around to the fact that there are cast engines out of there. And I'm getting very tired of burying my friends. Guys that have worked for their cities and towns for years, some, not many years, and they've, they've died to cancer. And they're finding more and more that people are dying from cancer that they have got on the job. And we need to stop that. And one of the ways we can do is by protecting them, giving them better gear, cleaning it often. If you want to go to YouTube, there are some pictures out there of gear being cleaned and see the stuff that comes out of them. It'll make you sick. So I encourage everybody, support this article. Make sure these guys have the clear and safe equipment that they can have so that it will be able to protect us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bridal. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 17? Mr. Jones. The Budget Committee was uh, early on in support of this concept of having a second gear for each firefighter. I'm happy that the Board of Selectmen came up with this one article to effectuate that. Um, it is not just a matter of firefighter safety, although I don't want to minimize that. It's a matter of public safety. If they go out on a call and they come back an hour later, another call comes in, they don't have the gear ready without a second set. So there's a delay in that response. So you're at risk. So vote yes on this, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Anyone else? Mr. Emmert. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Tracy Emmert, 207 North Shore Road. Uh, I would uh, comment that in my last uh, term in the legislature, we revised the statutes that supported the uh, firefighters as far as cancer uh, and firefighting, not only on active duty, but through retirement. Uh, one of the things that came out of testimony that I was quite surprised at is most of us have the impression that the firefighters' boots and gear are sitting there and they jump out of bed right into them and off they go. That's no longer the case. They, can't even, they, they cannot bring that gear into the residential part of the fire station anymore. So they, I mean, dumb me, I'm, I watch television and the firefighters are jumping in their gear. That doesn't happen anymore. The gear has to, to be out of the residential area. So. The, the cancer in firefighters is a real thing. I think the state has stepped up and supported the concept, uh, and I hope you support this Warren article. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Emmert. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Yes, sir. Mike Brillard, 8 Pine Road, Hampton, New Hampshire. 
Um, I'm one of the gentlemen uh, amongst the gentlemen and ladies in the department that I'm one of those nine people that my gear are going to expire in a couple of months. I just want to say a couple of things, don't waste a lot of time. Um, my second set of gear is supposed to be less than 10 years old. I think it's 21 years old. And that's the gear that I go into fires with every day. I'm a lieutenant on the department, and the most important thing to me is the men and women that work with me and for me go home safely at night. So I, I'm not asking you, I'm begging you to support this article so that every member of the Hampton Fire Department can go home safely at the end of the night to their families. Thank you, Mr. Brillier. All right, I think we're all, all done on Article 17, and we will move on